everybody. So it's great to be here. I appreciate your opportunity to join you today. And that was quite a long bio. If I know she was going to read it, I would have really shortened it up. I thought she was going to send it out. Oh, it's great. <laughs> um, makes me sound really, really old. Um, but um, so I grew up actually just north of the school, the same room right over here. And so went to junior high, junior high over here, I think our junior high. So when I come back to, to SLIC and this campus, um, I obviously associate that with growing up and, and good experiences and memories that way. So as mentioned, I work for a company that has gone through some big changes. And just by a show of hands, how many knew that Westar is now Dominion Energy? Good, good. Well, I hope to let some of you know, and we'll educate some of the others that weren't aware of that. But um, so, our name was Questar, and we've been in the community for 90 plus years. And our company has gone through a lot of changes prior to us merging with Green Energy. But um, we used to be called Mountain Fuel back in the day, and so some people might remember that. And we, at the time, the reason why we changed the utility to from Coast Guard Gas, no, or from Mount Fuel to Coast Guard Gas, was because um, a lot of people don't know, people think that Coast Guard Gas is Quest Star, but it's not. That was just one of our lines of business, and actually the smallest line of business, but that's what you as consumers see and recognize the most. Because that's how you pay your gas bill, that's how you connect to it, as far as that goes. But we actually have three lines of business, and we still continue to have three lines of business as Dominion Energy. So we have an exploration and production business line. So we, we go out and find that gas, and then we have a pipeline company that transports the gas. And then we have the utility that delivers the gas to your homes. So if you get up and have a hot shower in the morning, or you turn on your heat, or you cook up an omelet with your natural gas stove, then, and there's no problems, then we've done what we are supposed to do. And we feel good about that. So we merged um, with Dominion. And when we first merged with them, we they, they were called Dominion Energy Resources, and or Dominion Resources, excuse me. And this was the so this was the logo and the name. Hate the logo. Hated the logo. I was like, that's the ugliest logo. What is that? You know, and yeah, is it the hand of God? Is it real blood? What is that? Um, and I guess it's supposed to be a hand touching energy, but you know. If you need an explanation for what your logo is, it's not a good logo, right? So even before we were a topic of conversation with Dominion Resources, they had already decided, okay, we need to upgrade and update our name and our logo. So when it came together that we were going to merge with them, they were like, okay, we gotta get this going. And so there was a time where we were Questar, and then we were Dominion, or Dominion Questar. And we, during that Dominion Questar time, we had no logo. We couldn't use our own Questar logo. That was, that was gone. But we didn't have a logo because we knew this name change was coming. And so, kind of give you the timeline. So in February of 2016, we announced the intent to merge. And then in May of 2016, plus our shareholders had to approve it. And you're talking two huge companies coming together. Um, but Dominion Energy is a company 10 times the size of Cluster. They're huge. And so our shareholders had to approve the merge. And then the we got federal approval very quickly. And the business line that is the West Coast for Gas, they have state regulatory um, 
parameters that they have to stay within. And so the public service commissions in Idaho, Utah, and Wyoming had to review all this information to ensure that it was a good move for consumers. And so by law, Wyoming had seven months to make their ruling. And they said, don't expect it a day before that. And so Utah, not having that kind of parameter, but knowing that Wyoming did, they're like, yeah, we'll get ours to you around the same time. And Idaho was like, hey, whatever you want to do, we're good. So uh, the Public Service Commission in Utah okayed it and gave their ruling in August of 2016. And then Wyoming in September, September 14th to be exact, and by September 16th, we had closed the merge. So to me, I've always been of the belief that if something's meant to come together and happen, it will happen. And this came together extremely quickly for two big companies to come together. And then because uh, they had been on the track to change the name, they wanted a name that would be immediately recognizable as to what we did as an industry. Because Dominion Resources, I was like, you know, that could be a number of things. To me, it sounded like an employee placement agency or something. They're definitely not energy. And so they decided on Dominion Energy, came up with a new logo, and that had going four shareholders, and that was approved unanimously. And then we started to roll out the new name change here locally in June 2017. So I'll kind of give you an idea how big this company is. We have three lines of business basically. So the company is headquartered in Richmond, Virginia, and it's one of the, late, the nation's largest, it's really the third largest in the country. And you have power delivery, power generation, and gas and infrastructure. <coughs> So this is where the old Questar resides. And <coughs> you and I, this is, this is um, our boilerplate of uh, a description of our company. So Dominion Energy is one of the nation's largest producers and transporters of energy with a portfolio of approximately 26,000 megawatts of electric generation, 14,800 miles of natural gas transmission, gathering and storage pipeline, and 66 100 miles of electric transmission lines. Dominion Energy operates one of the nation's largest natural gas storage systems with approximately 1 trillion cubic feet of storage capacity and serves nearly 6 million utility and retail customers for retail energy customers. So it's a big company, but they've been around for 100 plus years. Obviously, they're doing something right. And so to bring these two companies together, made a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. Questar was very integrated across natural gas. I described the three lines of business, but Dominion Energy not only has natural gas, they have electricity, they have nuclear, they have uh, a little bit of coal, they have renewables, wind, solar, bio, um, all of the, so it, they are integrated across several forms of energy. And in the energy industry, going forward, you have really got to be in that kind of position to be successful in the energy market. So this illustrates, again, we're in 18 states, and before Questar, the old, this is the old Questar footprint, now known as the Western region, when we came on, um, that increased into 18 states. And we do have some smaller operations in New Mexico, North Dakota, um, Nevada, but we really don't count those as states where we do business because the operations are so small. So we're really um, in a few more states, but that's predominantly it. And then in California, um, basically what is there are solar farms, big, huge solar farms. And there's actually also a very large solar farm just north of Cedar City. And even before we merged, the company uh, invested $3 billion in that solar farm down just north of Cedar City. 
So I asked you guys who knows about Questar, the energy change. So in June, July of 2017, we did a survey of customers that that we had connected with in the last 30 days in that time period. And if they knew the new international gas utility, obviously very high uh, recognition and um, general population who hadn't had a recent interaction with us was still pretty high. So we have a lot of work to do to change and get our new name out there and our new brand. So we have the newspapers with ads. We have billboards everywhere. You may have seen those. All on the Wasatch Front. Billing inserts in your natural gas bill for those who don't receive it electronically which you'd be surprised. Out of our mind, customers, of natural gas customers, um, about two thirds prefer to have a, still a physical bill. Yeah, I know, we're like, electronics the way to go. But they like having that bill. And so, so this was in the bill insert, and plus it was also posted online for those who, who uh, prefer theirs electronically, but the bill, you know, the envelope inside, so we were really messaging, messaging, messaging in a lot of different ways. In the bill itself, have you heard, plus our gas is now in energy. So we're really trying to saturate the market and get that message out there. Because we don't want somebody to get a bill to say, post our gas, or uh, green energy, and just toss it, not knowing who that is and not recognizing the name. So, and then all of our brochures that could apply to a natural gas customer, those all had to be changed and rebranded. You know, and then this is in addition to the vast amount of fleets we have. All of our, um, all of our uh, uniforms, letterhead, business cards, um, you know, all that stuff had to be redone. So there, you know, there's layers from layers from layers of things that had to be done. And 2017 was a, a huge year for us of innovation, <coughs> making this all happen. And so, um, you know, and then I don't know if you noticed as you're driving around that there's markers that mark where the gas lines are, and they. You just say, what's our gas? Well, there's 100,000 of those throughout our footprint, and we had to rebrand every single one of those. And because it was a huge cost to actually change out physically the sign, we put stickers <laughs> over the Questar gas name, so that saved a huge uh, amount of cash uh, as far as the merge went. So we've done all that now. June through October, same kind of thing. So here are the numbers that were in June, July. You come into the next three months, and the 30 days, it's so-so, uh, and it's getting much better as we go. And then the general population, well, we have a little bit of work to do. So um, it's an ever-evolving process. And then have, been, have you all heard or seen Thermalize commercials and you know radio spots and stuff like that? So this is our conservation program, which you all probably know. And even that had to be rebranded. So now it's a new look. And he looks a little, a little bit more mature than he did several years ago. And we were surprised. This has been a real amazingly successful campaign. And when we knew we were changing names and merging, we had focus groups that we said, is this, is it, this run its course? Should we drop this and come up with it? No, we love Thermwise. Thermwise is great. And Therm, so, uh, so our, one of our ads 
Um, so therm, there's something different about you. He's got this big long beard. Um, but that was really well received by the public. But it was funny because they were like, you know, there's something different about you. He's got this big huge long beard. Um, but new name, new book. So anyway, lots of lots of changes, and it's a. I think it's good for consumers. I think customers. Um, we need it to be as far as your service. It's the same people in the Western region doing the work that have always been doing the work. It's just a different name, and we're just part of a very large organization now. So, um, <coughs> moving on, what I do specifically for the company, you saw and heard, is that I manage our philanthropy and our community outreach volunteer efforts and those kinds of things and people when they hear about what I do they're like wow you get to give away money and a lot of it and wow that's going to be the best job in the world and in a lot of respects it is it's great to give away somebody else's money and it's great to uh, be able to represent a company that believes in giving back that understands the importance of being a good corporate citizen and that it is the right thing to do. And as Questar and Alice Community Energy, I have never been out of the community and felt uncomfortable, felt like I was out there, you know, not being truthful about our company and about what we do. Um, but we've always had great leadership and we still do with Stimulant Energy. So one of my favorite sayings about giving is this. I'm going to read it word to word. To give away money is an easy matter and in anybody's power. Anybody can do it. But to decide whom to give it to and how large and when and for what purpose and how is neither in everyone's power nor an easy matter. It's not easy to give away money. And it's not easy to do it in a way that is aligned with your your values, the importance of what is is needed in the community, and how you can have that impact to help those in need. So we have a process that those who apply for funding have to go through. We have a what we call a community investment board. It's chaired by the highest level of management in the Western region. And all the requests go through me, and then we meet as a, a committee or a, a board um, several times throughout the year. And we have the ability on a local level to approve anything up to 25,000, and it doesn't need to go further than that. If it's beyond 25,000, then it needs to be escalated to the Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation Board for an additional level of approval. But they understand that once it gets to that level, the local community investment board has made that recommendation, so it's probably a pretty solid request. And so it's very rarely declined. So what do we do as a company? In 2017, we contributed over $28 million in our footprint. So in 18 states. And 2,300 nonprofits benefited or their causes benefited from that giving. And some of that funding also went to energy share and reach programs that help people with their their bills. If they're unable to pay their electric their, their natural gas bill or their electric bill, we will help them and provide a source of funding to get them through those tough times. Also, we're a big Big proponent, we were as plus star, we continue to be as a big energy of volunteering in the community. That 125,000 hours, a lot of this supported by paid time off, the company gives each employee eight hours a year to use however they want. They can either go to uh, you know, a 501c3 nonprofit or they can volunteer at their school or whatever that eight hours they want that to be is what they can use it for. But the 125,000 hours is obviously not all company sanctioned events. We provide an opportunity for employees to also input their 
personal volunteer efforts if they want to do that. You know, a lot of people are involved in Girl Scouts or you know, some other trade organizations that aren't sanctioned through the company necessarily, um, but they want to track those, so we allow them to do that. And that's why it's pretty big. The 6,000 hours down here that you see for the Western region are company sanctioned. Because up until January 1, we didn't have the ability to put in personal volunteer time. So that 6,000, or over 6,000 hours, um, is company sanctioned events. So employees take time out of their day to go volunteer on behalf of the company. Um, we also have employee employees who have their donations matched dollar for dollar, up to five thousand dollars per employee. If they serve on a board or a committee, or they volunteer fifty hours uh, volunteer time to a specific nonprofit, the company will match it to one. And then we do have a lot of our employees serving on nonprofit boards and committees and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. That's another way that we give. Those people have great expertise. They have knowledge that they can impart to these nonprofits. Oftentimes, nonprofits are on a shoestring budget. They can't afford a huge staff. And so by having people on boards, and I hope one day you'll consider being on a board of a nonprofit because the skill set that you bring is something that is valuable to them and they can't they can't always have a CFO. They can't always have an IT you know team. I mean so the skill sets that we can bring as a company and as employees really help these nonprofits. So last year locally that's in the Western region we gave two point eight million dollars to over 175 nonprofits. So and I interact with every single one of them. So and that's just who we Supported. I got hundreds more requests, but going back to the you get to give away money, yay! I get to tell people no a lot more than I get to tell people yes. So, hundreds more requests. We have a budget, we can't fund them all. I'm not saying that they're not great organizations, great causes, but we just can't fund everybody. It's just not feasible. So we do what we can, and we always try to make sure that it's impactful when we can. We want to use our volunteer teams and efforts to supplement and help a nonprofit. So we really try to do as much as we can uh, in the community to make a difference. And so these are our focus areas, human needs, environmental stewardship, education, Community, vita community vitality, and I won't read everything, but we have these focus areas so that we as a company can stay on task and help those that that we are focused on. There's, in Utah alone, there's almost 9,500 month profits, just in Utah. And you, simply cannot support everybody, like I mentioned. And there are amazing people doing extraordinary things. And if we did not have that nonprofit community in our communities, we would have huge gaps of, of services, and it would just create a huge problem. You can't depend on the state, the government, the federal government for everything. These nonprofits provide a huge service to our communities. So, uh, but we want to make sure that we're aligned to we are as a company and that we're um, focusing on those things that we have an expertise in as well. So why do we give a social responsibility and impact? I think that's the bottom line. We want to make a difference and we want to be able to, you know, hold our heads up high in the communities that we serve, because there's a lot of large companies that do not give. It's not in their strategy, it's not in their philosophy. They just don't give, and it's, it's too bad. Um, so obviously, what we want to work on the brand, 
um, engage and retain great talent. Um, grow our bottom line. I tell nonprofits, you know, we're not in business to give away money. We're in business to make money. And the more we make, the more we can give into the communities that we serve. So, you know, it does help when you know a company gives into a community, there's that brand alliance that, you know, you yeah, Pepsi didn't get to the community, but Coke did. If people do that, they probably go for the Coke more often because Pepsi would just keep all the money for themselves and never do anything in the community. So there's that brand alliance, brand awareness. And then, of course, it provides three to four service and things like that, that professional development for our employees. And so we have. You know, key objectives, and we want to also bring awareness to nonprofits that we serve. And so we have been starting to do 60 and 90 second videos that highlight throughout our footprint of our company uh, who we serve and some of the nonprofits that have a story to tell, have great programs, and we want to share that and get it out there not only through our website and our social media and all almost 18,000 employees. We're back in 1985. Since then, we've continued to grow. And we are so thankful that uh, Dominion has been with us for many, many years. These dollars will go to not only support our mountain programs, but our year round programs, kayaking, canoeing, rafting. It's amazing way that we can get folks out and active and those programs aren't necessarily about building skills but building confidence um, and self-esteem so that people can get back and engage with their communities and thank you so much for Dominion Energy to support those who have served our country. Uh, it's pretty huge. Yeah. So that just gives you an idea of just one of the organizations that we support, the National Ability Center, and located up in Park City. And so, um, you know, we, as she alluded to in her remarks, we've been a supporter of them for many, many years. They help lots of people with disabilities. And we have, in recent years, focused on their efforts to help our military. We all know that the military are military men and women are coming back either missing limbs or with PTSD issues. And so we thought that our funding would be best uh, geared to that program, so they received a $50,000 grant. <coughs> and I will mention too, while we're talking about military, the company, Dominion Energy, also believes in giving back and helping our veterans. And so one out of five new hires in our company is a veteran. So that's pretty cool. So what our marketing takes, I've talked about the foundation. Um, direct giving encompasses things like galas and breakfasts and you know those kinds of things. Oftentimes nonprofits, that's how they have their biggest fundraising opportunity is by having these kinds of events. It's important for us to be out there, for us to be supporting their efforts, and so we fund those types of things as well as programs and projects. Anything that the, the foundation, the Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation is focused on projects and programs, and, um, and the direct giving is focused on some of those things that I mentioned. So then volunteering, mission workplace giving, the energy programs, and then in kind, um, oftentimes we do give the things related to that as well. So this is just a sampling of, you know, I expect around 150, again, nonprofits this year, it could be more, but these are a sampling of who we have supported already this year. And in addition to these, we also, for decades, Postar and Mountain Main Energy has given scholarship dollars to 20 colleges and universities in Utah and Wyoming. And I'm talking back to the mid 80s. So 
and that money is used for scholarships. So we believe in a huge way that education is important. And we, as you know, philosophy of the company, we build education. And you know, you guys being here, you are ensuring that you have a stronger future. And if you do well in your career, and your path in life, you are, you know, you're a consumer, you're attending different events in the community, you are buying different products in the community, and it's because you have that good, solid educational background. So, these are a couple of ads that we have put out there. Uh, again, trying to get a name brand out there. And we would use you know, some of these for these you know, galas and things like that. So volunteering, I will tell you, if you guys land a job or you already have a job with a company who believes in giving back by volunteering, I will tell you that is one of the best ways to get engaged. And we always um, have a question posed by employees, how can I get ahead in the company? What can I do? The one thing, the one important thing they can do is volunteer. Because not only are they giving back to the communities that we serve, but they are interacting with employees, their fellow employees that they may not even work with or know who they are other than meeting them and volunteering them. So it increases their scope of networking, and oftentimes you have leadership and people who you may be interviewing for a job with later in your career. So meeting out, doing something great for the community is a whole different bill than meeting somebody in the hall of your building. <coughs> so it's been said that there are two roles for success. Never reveal everything you know. And I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love that. I saw that on Twitter a few years ago, and I'm like, that is just hilarious. Um, and so, of course, I have incorporated it. Um, <coughs> but what do you think Harvard tells its MBAs is the number one thing that matters when they're negotiating the salary? Any ideas? The number one thing they tell their, their students? That's good. Not it, but that's good. It is so simple. They need to like you. And so it is it's a very simple concept, but if you're not a very nice person, you're probably not going to negotiate well, right? You if you have a chip on your shoulder, it's going to impact your career. I can guarantee it. My second rule for success, other so than don't reveal everything you know, is attitude. Attitude, I think, is the number one thing. You can have two people that have the same skill set, and if one has a bad attitude, I can guarantee you that the person who has a good attitude is going to be considered for things that that other person will not be considered for. So what separates winners from losers is, is an ability. It's, oftentimes and most often attitude. So it's the number one thing that holds people back. And sure, experience, education, all those things are factors, but sometimes those matter very little because companies feel like, okay, this person has good attitude, they're a go-getter, they have great work ethic. They may not know everything, but we can teach them. And you could have this person over here who has the highest education ever, who thinks they've got it dialed in, but they're they're not very nice, they're not, they don't play well with others, and the company is going to go, hmm, I don't think uh, this is the way to go, even though they have degrees and they have lots of education, lots of experience, they'll go for the person who's got that good attitude. So, you know, research shows this is true, you know, in the education system, collaboration is often called, you know, cheating, right? When you're 
it, 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 it can be oftentimes. But in the business, in the business world, this is the way we get things done, right? And so when there, there's collaboration, there's also an issue of trust. You don't want to collaborate with someone you think may stab you in the back or may, you know, throw you under the bus. So those with bad attitude don't bring the that element to the table, and you know, productivity is reduced when they don't have a good attitude. So the best predictor of team success at work is not smarts or efforts, but it's how team members feel about each other. And again, going back, they like you and they feel like you, know, you are truly a collaborative team member and team player. They, it just brings that synergy and that ability to get things done to the forefront. So be the person you were in your interview. I think people oftentimes forget that. They, you go into an interview, you look amazing, you've got this great <coughs> attitude, you, you're got, you've got it going on, right? You're, you're there to impress, you're there to make a difference, and you're there to get that job. That's what they think they hired, right? That's what they hope they were getting for their money. You were positive, enthusiastic, well-prepared, aimed to please. In other words, you have that great attitude. And what more can a company ask for? So, um, <coughs> but what if a scenario happens like happened to me? Here we work by star. I could walk into my boss's office, who was the chairman, president, CEO of the company. I could walk in there anytime and say, hey, I have this issue. Can we get this taken care of? Boom, decisions made, moving on. Now I have like five layers between me and the chairman, president, and CEO of Dominion Energy. I've been demoted uh, two levels. So I'm no longer director uh, of uh, community relations because there's already a director of community relations back in Richmond, Virginia. So there'll be two of us. So lots of changes, right? And so one of my all time favorite sayings is this. Life is all about how you handle plan B. Because you think, you know, I've been with Plusstar for 25 years, and I thought I was going to retire from Plusstar. I never in a million years thought we would merge with a company, let alone a company this big. But it happened. So I can either go to my plan B and work it out, and have that good attitude, or I can wallow in, oh, my life is over. I, you know, it's not what I envisioned. But the reality is, it's changed. This is our new normal. Deal with it and move on. So, everybody know who Lou Holtz is? So, Lou Holtz is a famous um, college football and pro football coach, very successful as well as a common taste now. But I love this saying of his. It's the ability is what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do, but attitude determines how well you do it. So I'm choosing, in my situation, to have a good attitude. Because you never know. It's truly, really, it's, you hear this, then you go, oh yeah. But truly, when one door closes, another opens. If you're looking forward. If you're not looking forward, then that door's going to open and close. You'll never know about it. So, my last slide is: if you want something in your life you've never had, you'll have to do something you've never done. So, take a chance. You're here. You're getting your education. That is huge. Keep on that path. Finish. Move on to your career, or if you choose to go on to a four-year institution, whatever that is, stay on that path. We all we all have a story. Everybody has a story about how they're here today. And you can choose to let that be a defining moment in a positive way or a negative way. And I sure hope that you choose a positive way. That's a great question. So the question is, is why was it important for us to really get our new brand out there? Um, I mentioned one thing, and that was, you know, as people receive their gas bills, 
if it had the main energy on there and they weren't familiar with that, they would probably toss it in the garbage. Yeah. You know? Um, but also, when you're part of a major corporation like this, Questar is gone. Questar is no longer. And so we really had to message that and we continue to message that all day, every day, because we are a new company. And that needs to be the messaging out there for you know a lot of reasons to have that brand awareness. So if people see us at you know um, you know volunteering out there with our volunteer T-shirts, Dominion Energy. Oh, that's that's you know, what's Questar. Now they're Dominion Energy. So it's that brand awareness and and you're, you've got Questar in the rearview mirror. And we're moving forward. Oh, thank you. Good question. Any other questions? I know I said to get to your next class, so hopefully I've left something that uh, you know resonates and helps you in your future. So good luck to everybody.